Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. We're back. We're with part two with Tommy Bone, my right hand man. I'm back in Fort Lauderdale. I love it down here. Uh, we're gonna do this interview. We got some great stories. We were just talking beforehand, and the, and the stories start flying, uh, even about the shirt. But before I get started, please check me out on YouTube member programs, Patreon, Discord. That's crazy. You a fan? Get to Discord. The book Gangster Redemption, all the merch, the cigars, Crooked Diamond, and in the video description below you can catch all these links do anything you want there uh you know tommy welcome back buddy yeah i'm good to see you twice and get to see you i know i, I mean seeing you twice in the same month in a while well we got to do this one. i mean obviously we're close but i'm you know how busy i am and you're busy i, I, I want to if you haven't watched the last episode with tommy you got to watch the opening episode uh and tommy was my right hand man and when i say did a lot i trusted him 100 percent still do he's a great father one of the best sports trivia minds i know and we'll talk about that back before google tommy was google uh i would call him from all over the world and we get information from him because he's a he's an encyclopedia uh we had a lot of fun with that uh i am wearing a shirt lenny's pizzeria lenny's pizzeria is my pizzeria that i own i ended up uh it had jewish lightning uh that's that, that's just the saying Obviously, it, it was burned to the ground uh, by me, <laughs> uh, and I didn't just burn the pizzeria down, I burned the whole plaza down. Uh, they loved me. The people in the places loved me, because they all got their money. I didn't, but they got their money. Uh, but I was doing so much hot diamonds out of that, by that time. People would come in, I had good pizza. You know that, you heard that. Yes, I did. I, I, didn't, don't, get to, I didn't get to, I don't remember going there. I didn't know you, but I think I was there, and yes, it was, oh, I'm it sure. was good New York pizza, because I lived in North Lauderdale for so long. And, and the pizzeria was, uh, you know, it was right at the softball field, that's what, you know, I have the paperwork that I, uh, let's just put it this way, I uh, got a person elected, we know, and uh, I actually still have the paperwork that of the articles I put in the paper with my security guard company, you know, and all this bullshit that was really, uh, it, it, Boy, what we did back in the day, everybody, you couldn't do today. No, no, no it's impossible. Nor do I want, and we all move on in life. Uh, we change a little bit, and, uh, you know, I look at things in a different light now. Obviously, we had some good times. I don't ever relish in the fact that I had a, I don't say harm people in it, because I didn't. I uh, but put fear in people, stuff of that nature. I always say to people, listen, I never hurt anybody. Wait, before you hit that who wasn't in my business. Whether they were a criminal, whether they robbing, whether they doing something like that. If you were in that game, then you... Uh, were open game. You were open game. I mean, that's just the way it was, uh, and that's how we, how we ran things in the, back in the day. We didn't hurt civilians, you know that. Right. I had a matter of fact, Tommy, let's see if you remember this. I had a lot of old play. I was a golfer, I was a good golfer. Obviously, still am, well, I was. Still actually not bad, but the... I used to go golfing, and even the old people used to come to the parties. Uh, Tom, I forget a couple of. Days. I'm talking older people that, that they love what I, you know. And and again, I used to play at that uh, spring tree. Spring tree for the see. I was talking to somebody about that today. You know that we used to play in the senior league, and you know I'd come over and play with you over there. A, a, a golf, and you know I, I was just a good golfer and uh, enjoyed it. Men, so we used to go to Hooters. If yep. you remember, right next door. Right next to Hooters, so we used to go to Hooters all the time. So now, obviously, Tommy, we talked in the last show about you getting arrested. Uh, not getting arrested. arrested. Uh, uh, getting questioned. Getting questioned. You were never arrested. You're never actually an amazing man because you actually work for a school now. Well, you don't work for the school. you actually a coach. You, you've coached. Matter of fact, on our last show, you didn't wear it this show. On our last show, you had a shirt that I sponsored the team. My, yep, my I still wear the shirt. People ask me, what is the... Uh, the, what did it? What uh, Terminators? The Terminator. Who did Terminate with my thing? I said Tommy designed that shirt. Yeah, hell of a design. They're, they're four. Thank you. They're four-year-old soccer players at the time. Now they're six. My some of my grandkids up in North Carolina. You know I'll always do that. Uh, I, I will always sponsor. We something. started that when my daughter was playing, and she's 38 now. When you almost got me kicked out of the game, uh, <laughs> when you're yelling at the refs from across the field. When we used to use. L and M. Oh, and, oh, yeah. We used and, all these corporations. And we had Sam Zurich's uh, bowling. Your brother-in-law. Yeah, and we, yeah. We used, we used, used his sponsor. Did you remember when the time I almost kicked the shit out of Pete? Pete Weber was in the bar. That little cocky fuck. <laughs> and, and, and he got cocky, and people said, "Pete, you better not do that to him." 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> well, they called you at the Brooklyn Boys up there, you know, at the, right up in, when you were up in Melbourne up there. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was like, you know, you didn't want to do things, you know. We were pretty off the charts there. We had things going from getting arrested to shooting up Joe's parking lot to uh, uh, doing other things. I was pretty crazy with the gun. You remember the to guns? Only people crazy to me was your father-in-law and your father. The, they, they were nutty nuts. They had more guns than here. Hey, 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 Papa Tom, you got a gun? Where? Here, 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 a pouch. I loved your dad. Yeah. You know, your dad used to bartend for me at my house during events. Yep. And I used to throw the best, first of all, I was known to throw the best parties in South Florida. Uh, I had a nine foot bar, and I would tell Tommy, Tommy, bring 10 girls back, and we had about three guys, four guys. And I remember having 10 people in a three man jacuzzi. Do you remember that? I remember. I remember my dad getting lucky in there with the neighbor's grandma. <laughs> <laughs> This is crazy, man. <laughs> Thinking about that, but okay. Let just I want to bring everybody to a second. So you don't you don't get arrested. You don't get anything. It starts like kind of uh, going. I end up getting sentenced, and I beat my life sentence. I know that was a big deal, obviously, because I was gonna and I did it myself. You know that I get my law degree, doing everything I did, because I hate lawyers. Paralegal, paralegal, but I have the the credits to be right. But I can't because I'm a convicted felon. But, but uh, you'd be an honorary policeman. I am an honorary policeman. Is, is that fucked up or what? Tommy, how fucked up is that? It's crazy. Maybe I'll be an honorary mayor somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I uh, get arrested. I go there. I remember you visiting. Yeah, I visited you up in Coleman. Yeah. You know, we did a video here with Missy and Ashley, obviously your goddaughter, and you know Miss very well, about uh, visiting. What did you think of the visits? And how did they stress you out? Or? No, no, because I, I was only I only went there a couple times, and I, only, and I went to Coleman only, which is kind of it's so nice compared to all oh, the other crazy places you were. You oh, Atlanta and Edgefield, and so I, I thought they were very nice. I, we got a picture together, and this and that. I still have the picture, you know, and uh, I, 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 I still rem just remember even just the picture still in my head, you know, so. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was very nice. I, it was just weird, you know, just the way their visits are. Because I had never visited anybody in a jail before. Or a prison, well, that's a real prison. Or a prison yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. never, nothing, I've never done that. Do you know, uh, just to let the audience know, do you know I'm the only man who ever went back to the same prison he was in and spoke? I actually went to that prison and spoke. I remember, I remember and that. it was weird me walking through the compound with the warden and the captain. The last time I did that, it was always going to the hole. <laughs> so, Which uh, you lived at. Yeah, I was in a hole for a lot of years, three years. Uh, what does your grandkids think of like kind of like you were the right hand man of the biggest jewel robber in the country? Yeah, especially now. I mean, because now my oldest two grandsons are 17, 16, both playing high school football. One could become an NFL star someday. He's right now being looked at by some of the top colleges. To, Great, congratulations! To you know that, yeah. Well, when he and, gets there, when he signs, yeah, can he come on my show? I hope he gets an NIL deal. You can, can, can you get him on my uh, show? Anytime you want. My boys would love to. Oh they, yeah. They, you know they've seen you at parties, stuff like that. When we've had for my dad, my father-in-law, things like that. But they probably they feel intimidated to come up to me and talk. And they were kids. Now they're now they're teenagers that follow you. It's kind of weird when they think. Papa, that's Uncle Larry, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, it's like, and they think it's like, you know, and then they're old enough to read the book, you know, and, you know. They, Did so they, they know they, right away you were Fat Tony? No, um, we finally kind of discussed it because other people knew, like my grandson AJ's mom read the book, Candace, she read the book, so she knew who I was. You know, you know, my dad was the first one, though, when my dad read the book, he called me up. And he's like, Tom? I'm like, yeah, I haven't read the book, Dad. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, it's funny because uh, uh, obviously I changed names, you know, obviously at that the time. guilty, I guess. To protect the guilty. <laughs> the, uh, there were some things in there that were, you know, could have gotten deeper. Uh, and I didn't. And, because I wouldn't do that. You know, it's, it's never in my nature to do that. And it will never be in my nature to do that. But it, it's funny because I meet so many people at airports and people, places, and, and, they'll, and they'll, you know, and knowing your grandkids or, you know, knowing your, your, the way you are, you, you're amazing, you're amazing grandpa, Thank great, you. amazing dad, you put kids through college, amazing guy, you, you dedicate your life to them, and I, and I love that, you always helped me out, when I was in prison you took care of my daughter, which you know how much I, I appreciate it, I love that girl, like uh, she's my own, yep, and now she's a big girl as a bartender and now she kicks people's ass, what the fuck is this world coming up? 
But anyway, when I go. I visited her last year for her birthday. I went and brought her flowers because it was COVID, just oh, kind of like thing. I felt yeah. bad. She couldn't really do stuff, so I ran over there to bring her flowers for her birthday and stuff like that. So you, you, you know, it's funny, Tommy, because uh, when I was arrested and how rough it was in prison, and and yes, the visits, and as Missy and Ashley said during the day, I never once complained. No, I mean, you would send me letters, you know, just. Telling some of the abuse you were getting, oh, get abuse that, was, was just, that was going on, uh, but you know, never bitch. Joe oh, Firmini no. used to say that. Never, I, never I, complained. I especially love, visits, anything. Love Joe. Joe and I went to the same high school. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and Long Island, you know, yep. since he passed, yeah, he's passed about what, six months now. Yeah, he was the big bowling guy, you know. Yeah, he owned him, a but, bunch of them, good friend, and I actually helped him not get shaken down. That's the one over there. I love Joe, but uh, it's. I, I look at that, you know, and uh, now I look back and I say, you know, I, I do the same thing now. I, I love my daughter and I have to help. But now I'm at the level with, with my son and my daughter that I can party with them, yeah. I can hang with them. Very We're all older. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll be 38, so. You'll <laughs> <laughs> be 38, yeah. Yeah, I wish. I'm 61. We're both 61. My, I have a daughter, 38, and I, I, I'm only 60. I, I, no, you're 61 now. No, I, I'm only 60. Oh, oh no, no. I, December, I isn't it? May. I don't turn until oh, May. Oh, is it May? Yeah. Oh, you're 62. Yeah. You were born in 1962. I was born in 1962. But I know we were at the same age yeah. at the same time. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always right now. We got that little clip over. Yes. And then, uh, yeah, I'll be 62 now. And I look back and, you know, I feel pretty good health-wise and yeah. all that. Thank you know? God, me and, too. And I'm lucky after not getting taken care of for many, many, many years. But uh, you, you end up getting, coming, you know, visit me. It's over. Everything's out. When did you know I was going to be all right when I got out? Oh, when you got out? Uh, I, I, I knew, first of all, you are a survivor. So I knew you were going to be good. I remember when you first got out, we went to, uh, Ashley came with you, we went out to dinner over on Coconut Creek Parkway. Wow, uh, I don't remember and, this, everybody. Yeah, you got some and, memory, Tommy. And that was, the, that was the first time I got to see you when you actually got out. You know, and we went to dinner with my family and everything. It was great. I knew you would always, you know, you would always find something because number one, you're one of the smartest people I know. Okay, period. Survivor. And you're always gonna survive, but you're just smart. You're, you love to read. You love, you, you know, you're just so intelligent. One of the smartest men I've ever Thank known. Thank you. Yeah. And if you would have put the same effort, which now you're doing, okay, to <laughs> help people. You're still very now. You're still very very successful. As successful as you were as a criminal, you are as not a criminal. Right. No. And I, I think about that a lot of times. I, and I try to tell younger people, even whatever age. First of all, don't ever quit because you get out of forty six and you can start over uh, with a racket. And I don't mean just a racket, a real bad racket. Uh, convictions. Famous. Famous bad rackets. Uh, but you can survive. You can make it. You just gotta be determined, and you gotta. Find what you like and work it. You know, we always said that, you know, that you, you do that. And kids have been always something that you, I mean, I don't care when you were a bad boy, you always still took care of the kids. Your Christmas stuff, this and that. Getting, anything was needed for the kids, you were always there for them. You know, my sister used to like call Robin Hood. The, 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 <laughs> no, my sister used to call it the Robin Hood syndrome. I, I used to do a lot. The party alone was became the biggest thing in, in probably South Florida, really, at that time, besides, I mean, like, a, a, you know, the flea market. There was no private party bigger than that, from car shows to bands to fucking uh, trackless trains to fucking dunk houses. People from all over coming to that, and I would never take a dime. Never. I, and even when people want to give me, I said, nope, and I don't, you do what you want, donate it, but this is for, how many families used to come up to me and say, I could never take my kid, feed him, drink, have music, have it all day out, it would cost me a fortune. Thank you. And that's all I, 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 you know, and I love to do, uh, to this day I do that, right. you know, you I love that. Sponsor the kids, you do anything, you know, like I said. I hate you know. to see kids make the mistakes, one that I made, and don't get me wrong, I know what I did was wrong, but it was the way I grew up, and you know that. Right. I mean, I grew up in that environment, it was, you either became a cop or a fucking gangster. It's just it. Cops are gangsters. I happen to be a gangster. <laughs> so it was just that, that's the way we live. When, when I... <laughs> This is a really wild one. Now, you know me so well. Now, we did some partying. Now, it was funny, because I'll, I'll give a quick story how it went. I didn't even have to carry money, because Tommy would take care of everything, kind of like following. I would cause a fucking unbelievable mess, 
and Tommy would be behind me cleaning it up. I mean, taking care of people. You, we always took care of everybody. Absolutely. Everybody was taken care of. Uh, what was the wildest did you see me, like, uh, no, I mean, the fucking women and the drugs and everything, and I didn't care. I was. What, what do you think one of the wildest was? Well, I would have to say when we went to Brooklyn first and uh, to Willie's, and then after that, we took the limousine into Atlantic City uh, for my 30th birthday. Oh, I treated you there, yeah? Right, and we stayed at the Trump Plaza. And no, the uh, Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal, Taj Mahal, sorry. One of the Trump hotels, right, whatever. And... Um, You'd be out there gambling with... Roger, but I knew Roger, Roger King, right? Roger King. Now tell, and, and tell and who Roger King him. is. Roger King was Oprah's boss. You know, King World Productions. So, uh, Je Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune and yeah, Oprah uh, Winfrey. Merv Griffin I Show, Merv all Griffin. this show. So, so yeah, so... And I knew him well. And you, he liked you a lot. A lot. Now, we, we'd watch and he would lose so much freaking money with just one <laughs> shoot. I mean, and then quarter million, and you would be losing a little bit, but he'd be losing like a quarter million. And then if you hit, then you throw me a chip, and I put the chip in my. Oh, pocket. you made more money than I everybody. To, I used to make money just I by taking it. Throw me the chips, and I go home with more money than I came with. Oh my know? God, you came so, home with money. I remember just because yeah. I'm betting heavy thousand dollars a hand, but Roger King is betting ten thousand and twenty thousand a hand. What that showed me, and I'll never forget this, is everything's relative. The guy was worth a billion dollars, a billion dollars. That back when a billion was really a billion, <laughs> but he was worth a billion. I think he sold to, to CBS for three billion dollars. Him and his brother. You know, I got to hook up with Michael, his brother, oh, wow. since I got. But he died too. Did oh, you know that? What a shame. But I was going to do the inside the PBA tour with him, if you remember that. Wow. And of course, prison stopped that. They didn't let me do the show from prison. <laughs> yeah. But no. Uh, tell them what happened at the fight. We we go to a lot. Well, I get him. Well, there's a lot of coke going on with you and the boys again. Oh. That's one thing. I never did any of that stuff. Coke. That, that was good. How about I never like, did any of that like stuff. pile? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like I never saw it. Like it was like there in the room and everything else. But when we're downstairs, you Dude, had, do you remember you us doing coke in the casino and they don't give a shit? Because yeah. at the table, because we're gambling so much, they didn't even give a shit. It was it was definitely different, but I remember that Roger wanted you to sit next to him, and you were sitting a couple seats away. So he told Donald Trump in his own place to move over so you could sit next to him. <laughs> I mean, so I, whoever thought that guy would become the president of the United States? I, I, mean, do, I was ring, I remember being ringside, and I, I got us tickets to Michael Moore or Burt Cooper. It was a big big fight. You can look it up, and it was Tommy's birthday, so everything I took him up to Atlantic City. Water trip. That was awesome. So it was 30th birthday. We're sitting third row, fourth row. I don't know what we were right. We were behind. You guys were up there. We were behind. Well, <laughs> Me and the boys were back further. Not far. Yeah. Trust me, it wasn't far. But we met Mark Gaston in the elevator. Yeah. And But I remember being ringside. Roger goes, Larry, come here. Hey, Donald, this is Larry. Larry, Don, get out of here. You, he, I remember he, it was crazy. He, he he told Donald Trump he was gonna buy that place and fire him. Do you remember that time? He get it. He he was a great guy to hang with and party, man. That guy was amazing. But anyway, uh, so we did a lot of drugs. Do you remember the ending of that? What do you mean in you and the boys? No, no, not you. I mean, you that's one thing I You're, never did. I well, mean, you know, I, I always drink. I don't. But wait a minute. I, I always respected that, that, and I knew it. And I knew you didn't worry. And I knew you'd handle everything. Like. Uh, you always had the money and the cards and everything, and you'd handle everything, which we needed. Right. I mean, you know, we'd yeah, go into a place, <laughs> cause trouble, and leave, and then oh, Tommy, pay the five thousand dollar bill on my right, credit card. Right, right, right. And, 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 and you always got paid. Yeah, 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 absolutely, every penny. Yeah, and, even when and you more. Were, even when you were in jail, you yeah, could, you made sure that the money, the bills, got paid for me that had to be paid. Absolutely. Oh, you know, I wouldn't. But do you remember? I want to see how good your memory is. Do you remember at the end of that what I did with a girl? Would, uh, would up there? No, Atlantic City. No, because I was gone. Remember, my daughters made me promise that I would be home here for my birthday too. So I did that all up all night long, watch the fight, and fly back to Fort Lauderdale so I could spend my birthday with my girls. I promised oh, them. You so know, I left early. I do you did you hear what happened when I bring the hooker back to Brooklyn? No. Of course we get a girl, of and of course well, she's in the room, and she goes, who are these guys that had the limo, you know, they, yeah. I, I used to make a phone call and have a limo waiting for us. Before that, we used to even take the planes and the helicopters, but then call, I'd be in the bar, call the limo, and, and a limo would come pick me up to go to Atlantic City, but 
we break up a girl, and I tell her, listen, do you want to come back to Brooklyn and work? You know, if this is your trade, I have a lot of people who could, yeah, would use absolutely. you. Come back to Brooklyn, and I'll, you know, ding. The last shoe, I lose 30 grand on the last shoe. I remember that. The shoe. I wasn't there. The shoe. It. One shoe. I said, ah, we're waiting for the limo, and I went up the, I, whatever. I used to lose money. It, it, it just was something that I, I never got mad, really mad, you know. Should I schedule another? Robbery. Robbery. Uh, once the safe got down to low money, okay, here we go. But no. Well, uh, the credit cards got too high. Then. The credit card, okay, here's another store. Here another, we need another 500000 The uh, So what happened was, I take the girl back, and you know Brooklyn. So I take her back, and uh, I have some guys. That, remember, we had, I had an extra apartment there. You remember that, where I used to stick guns and uh, drugs and money. And what I did was, I bring her to the stretch, the home stretch. Now, she's in the back, giving whatever. She's, you know, to work in her business. And my buddy Johnny's wife comes in. And uh, she was crazy. She'd pull a gun, she'd do, she, and we'd fucking, I'm laughing. And, you know, my wife wouldn't do that. No. You know, my wives were very... Neither one of them. No. My wives knew who the law was, and they respected that. Whatever they did with whoever else, they couldn't do certain things. Because I told them, listen, I never hit you. You know, no, I never would hit a woman, and I never did. But if you think you're going to put your hands on me, I'm going to treat you like a man. And, uh, and even, you know, the second one, the crazy one, Missy, <laughs> she knew there was certain lines I just can't fucking cross and she did you know I give her that and you know how it was I respected people but don't push me to that other end because then it's then it's gonna be a, an ugly situation and it's not about losing or winning it's about I will come back with a gun and shoot you <laughs> so how do you lose you don't lose you know that's just the way life is but I look at this Tommy and I look at my party days and I look at you now and I look at even me I just don't do that as much I mean I still like that. We're in our 60s now. It's a little bit different. Well, I still like that fun. You know, I like to go out. But I, I just, I don't know if it's out of my system. Because it's not. You know, I still enjoy life and, and stuff. And I know you do. Uh, uh, but sometimes a, a good meal and laughing and going to games and stuff like that. Uh, I'm actually, my son's trying to get me to get Yankee tickets. But the way they play, they suck. So I don't care. Uh, but Hey, I'm a Met fan. So oh, we'll you and my brother. Boy, you hated the Yankees. You know that, my brother. Me too. But, uh. Anyway, besides that, what advice do you give young people? And, and I always tell them, don't look up to me, learn from me. Learn from my mistakes. That means you can't have fun, but be responsible. Uh, I always, that's my biggest uh, click. Listen, whatever you do in life, you control it. Don't let it control you. You know how I am. I, now, I was that way back as a criminal. If you remember when I robbed, I had rules. You fucking do a drug something. Remember when I put the gun to the guy's head with the drugs? I said, you fucking come, I'll, I'll kill you both. And just because you, if you got to handle business. Do you remember when a friend of ours didn't do the right thing and I, did, I, I, I prevented David from killing him? A friend of ours, and I'm not going to mention his name too much, uh, uh, for a robbery. He wanted to think he could do that, and he didn't. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Now you know. Oh, I know you're talking about. And David was so mad, he went, Jimmy, want to kill him. I said, whoa. We use it for something different, right? You know, I was good about management. You know, it, yeah, we I, all had it. We, we all had what we could be good at and what we and I I recognize that, with, right? Like I wasn't gonna go rob a jewelry store. But Tommy, you were the but best. I was a good delivery driver. <laughs> you you were the best because uh, of trust. I mean, when you have tons of money in a safe and you got things going, and you just trust. I, 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 I didn't care. You could. First of all, you like ordered. You could have took it now. You would have said, "Like, right, right, okay, we'll get it later." But it was like even with all my mess ups, and I know you cleaned a lot of them up afterwards. I mean, not only bouncers and people, but Tommy had to like grease a few skids on the way. Hey, listen, don't don't call the cops. This is, this is a private situation. <laughs> Take care of people. And I I remember once seeing you, and and you know we used to get out of control sometimes, and, and it got crazy. And when you have goons like we had, that, like, like we could clear out a room. Do you remember when the two goons, I had Joe and Louie down? And, and, and I made Mike, I said, Mike, you don't let anything happen to this guy. And yeah, Steve. Steve, and they followed them around and like people just parted the way. They think it's them. 
No, there's a guy nine feet fucking tall. I can tell everybody get that way. Absolutely. But you had the control, and I love that. And, and I, you're still the same person. Yeah, you know, like I said, I, I you know, that's why I coach the kids, the grandkids now. And you know, it's, it's always being in line the way you need to be in line. You know, and it's the same thing I teach the kids. You know, be leaders. You know, and. That's what I've always tried to be, and I want them to be leaders. I don't want them to be followers. I have all my grandchildren, as you know, are black. That makes a big difference, you know. Now the two of them are driving, so they got to be extra careful. Do good for you. Do the right thing. Respect the cops. Do the right thing. thing. Exactly. But you know, and then come see me. I always teach people, like you know, when they phone, just put the record, put the note on, turn it upside down, so that people can hear. But and that's great advice. Uh, uh, Advice for young people or people who are think it's over like quitting like in life they they run into hurdles what do you give them what advice you give them yeah, you know what first of all it's never over if you work hard I mean you know you have to you know follow your heart you gotta you gotta just stay on the right path to make a mistake you know you gotta fess up fess up to it and then let's find out what's gonna take to get to the right thing to do and I'm lucky I got there the boys especially the older ones they're AB, AB honor roll students. They're great kids. They, you know, like I said, they both well, have Tommy, their you, you, you are attentive now. to them. You're attentive. And so and, are their parents. But I also know that there are kids who don't have parents. Right. They don't have. But you know what I tell them? Use your, like, you know, Sublime. Uh, Rome is a friend of mine. And I had him on the show sitting right where you were. And he had a bad dad, everything. And he said, Larry, I learned from that. He goes, what not to do to my kids. Now, and, and they, everybody goes through their ups and downs. So we all do that. And, and I think that's important for everybody to know. Life isn't a rosy path, right? Life isn't. But the, just enjoy life. Enjoy the moments. And fucking put one foot in front of the other and find out what you like to do. Right. And you know what? You will make it. Work hard. Be dedicated. I tell people I've been a millionaire three times and it's fun. And how many times I fail. Yeah, you know, yeah, but uh, I mean, how many billionaires have failed over and over again, and they still, they're now they're billionaires. Exactly. You know why? Because it, it's a mindset. They're not afraid to fail. It's exactly. Don't be afraid to fail. And it's a mindset. With that note, Tommy, again, you know, we're gonna do this every so often, hey, man. I miss you. it, man. Love we're gonna, we're gonna go to dinner. Say hi to the kids. You know, uh, oh. tell them. That I'm gonna have them. You get yeah, those get kids it. when he gets his D1 or whatever he gets. Tell me he's coming on the show to show what he can do. Yeah, AJ and Marcus will be glad to be here, and they'll be on the show. Everybody, thanks for watching. It's Tommy Bohm. Still love you, buddy. Love you know too. that. Uh, please make good choices. Don't uh, think it's over. And have fun. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.